Hi there friends, it's Sarah with Ruffles and Rain Boots and today we're making the Wild Gnome a butterfly for spring. Isn't he so cute? If you'd like to make him, boop, stick around. As always, please like this video so I know you're here crafting with me. Now, speaking of crafting, this is a perfect tiered tray gnome. It's seven inches and made with the new wild gnome pattern. We're going to need the pattern minky fur, faux fur, and then any faux or any gnome making supplies. So the very first thing is we're transferring the pattern to our minky fabric. I would cut this by hand and not put this through your Cricut machine. The pattern is fine to put through the Cricut. The minky fabric no, it will be everywhere. Okay, so we're going to use this pattern for the no sew version. Now, I will tell you, you have to be very careful where you're gluing. One thing about gluing, especially here on the base, when you're using a sewing pattern and transferring it to no sew, you have to make sure your seams are very secure. This doesn't weigh a lot, so that's why we're able to use this both ways. But we do want to make sure that we flatten that glue using our finger protectors and that we're pulling it out towards the edge. And what that's going to do is just make sure that everything is secure. Rub it around in your fingers, pull it apart. You can see I found a little tiny space there. We want it 100% secure. When it is, we're going to turn it right sides out using our finger to press out that little humpy bumpy thing there. It looks like a mouth, right? Okay, so now we're going to fill up using poly beads as our weight about halfway up the body. And then we're going to take a generous portion of poly fill and we're going to tuck that in. Now, use more than you think you need because you want to be able to squeeze the body and have it bounce back to its original shape. All right, so now to sew, or you can sew this up by hand or you can use hot glue. So I'm gonna show you the hot glue method. You're just tucking the edges under, use your, I just burned myself. Use your fingers with the hot glue protectors, y'all. <laughs> All right, so we're just making sure that the two edges are folded into the middle. You can see I'll do it here. So I'm pushing it in and then I'm gonna add a little bit of glue. And then right on that edge, I'm just gonna tuck it over again Maybe finger protectors on both hands would be super. But you see how I'm pressing it closed? This also reminds me of the Demi Gorgon from Stranger Things. Do you? <laughs> it's a scary show, but it's good. Anyway, you're going to squeeze it, drop it, make sure that this base is solid because this is the base of our gnome. I'm just cutting off any of the glue that seeped out. You actually don't need to do that. I don't know why I did that, but here I am just tossing and dropping it to make sure it always lands flat. Next up is the hat. Now this is an extremely simple hat pattern and that is because all of the wild gnomes are designed to be built upon. As you can imagine, we're gonna put right sides together and put a nice thin bead of hot glue all the way down that edge. The one thing I wish I would have done differently on this gnome is I wish I would have hemmed just the portion over the nose. So you make your call, but when you're using minky fabric, you can see that division of where it's all stitched together on the inside. So I wish I would have done that. Minky fabric does shed, so go ahead and pull off any extras, clean up your space, and then flip your hat right side out. You can see it here. Now in order for it to be secure, we're going to have to add something on the inside. And you guessed what it is, it's polyfill. We're gonna be able to poke things in here, but it's keep its shape without any wire. So here I am just stuffing quite a bit of polyfill up until just where it hits the body. So you may have to just keep testing it onto your body. So line up the seams in the back, pull the hat down, and now it's time to cut our beard. I'm using a white Mongolian fur. It's gonna wrap around about halfway, cut into a trapezoid shape. You can use anything. You can use fur, you can use wool roving, yarn, whatever you have on hand. But look at this, this is the fun part. I love brushing out faux fur. I do. Okay, so as a tip, I would always make sure, number one, the seam is in the back, but number two, that you put a little bead of glue at the very top just to make sure you like where it's placed once you get everything on and then secure down the rest of the bead. Next up, I'm just gonna find out where my nose goes by pulling on the hat, splitting the fur all the way to the fabric backing. I add a generous portion of hot glue and press my wood bead or wood round or felt ball all the way in so the glue seeps up the sides and makes a secure hold. 
Next up, I'm just going to go ahead and attach the hat by lining up the seams in the back and then pressing down the very tip or I'm sorry, the very front of the hat onto the nose. Now this is the part I wish I would have tucked under because you can kind of see like a line in the minky, but don't do like me now that you know. All right, so we're going to about a half edge or half inch from the point, go ahead and glue. That's gonna be our base hold. And then you can, once that's secure, you can pull down the point, glue that down and the two edges right on the side of that. So here and here. All right, so you can leave him as he is, but I'm not gonna. I got a wheelbarrow and butterflies from Michaels and these butterflies have uh, a floral pick already attached. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut maybe between one and two and a half inches of the floral. Uh, wire and I'm just going to be pressing each of these butterflies through the minky fabric and into the styrofoam fill So this is really fun like you're gonna be messing around with it a lot But these little butterflies come pre-made and they're usually all color coordinated for you If you don't have a color wheel um, Do pick one up or even just look up one online But it's something you should have in your craft room because the reason my body is all one color is because I wanted to make sure the colors of the butterfly were what you saw So I'm going to finish this up It took me about a minute to add all those others and then uh, keep all those floral Cast-offs because those are great to use in arms. You'll just sort of wrap two of them together So pull those off and set those in your scrap pile and now I'm going to move on to the wheelbarrow. So I have these two half round balls and they fit in here mostly. So I'm just going to cut off one edge. I'll be trimming that again a little bit later just so I can create a base. For the back where my gnome is going to be sitting, I'm going to flatten, not real well, but I'm going to just sort of flatten the top of it so that my gnome has a nice flat place to sit. And then I'm gonna put it back in, measure it, and I'm gonna cut it up a little bit more off because I don't like it where it kind of made the, the thing sort of point down towards the front. There we go, now it's flat. All right, so I'm not actually even gonna glue those in because I don't need to. I'm gonna cover them with sheet moss. So as I've shared many times on my channel, do not under any circumstances use the Dollar Tree sheet moss. It is hideous, it is awful, this is not. This comes in a roll at craft supply stores. It's good with a coupon but basically it has the sticky backing on the on the on the I mean uh, sticky stuff on the back and a paper backing to cover it all I'm doing is cutting it to my size cutting a notch out for the front so we can overlap it and then trimming down the back because I had too much and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this using its own sticky right to those styrofoam balls so I just pull the paper backing off All right, and then press it. Now for the front, I did use glue because um, I wanted that uh, to be a little tighter in the front, so I just overlapped one cut edge over the other. And then I had a little blue, bit of glue sticking out, so I just took some cast offs and stuck them on top. Yeah, there you go, easy peasy. Next up, we're gonna put our fellow right in our um, wheelbarrow here. You kind of lean him back against that edge. It looks like he's chilling having a good time with all these butterflies on him. And then I took some wire cutters and just cut off the, the bit that was too long. And then I'm gonna use that one in the front and one in the back. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> and guess what, you're all done. Isn't he fun? Isn't this just so springy? Get the pattern down below. And as always, I sincerely appreciate you being here with me. Please like and subscribe for more crafty fun.